there, I'm Critzbear. Welcome back to Steve Jackson's Sorcery. Last time, we enjoyed the hospitality of a tribe of goat people and didn't give them the plague this time. This time, we're picking back up from where we left off last time. The only difference is I managed to get a meal with the goat people after, again, not giving them the plague. I, I, I just couldn't morally justify eating with them, knowing that I had, uh, what is it, the shivering disease? Trembling disease? Whatever. Whatever it was, I had it before, then I went back and replayed a little bit. Now we're back here. Oh, I also got uh, the extra lore bits that I discovered through experimentation. So now I know the whole story about uh, how the goat people got made. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, so now we're back here. Uh, you walk along the edge of a sharp ledge. Uh, you look over the ledge into the chasm. At the bottom, you can make out a rocky path hidden beneath a layer of fog. I could use my rope ladder, but I'm actually going to check out what spells I can use here, and if I can't use anything interesting, I'm just going to move on. D tell? What? Tell? Far. Oh, absolutely. Can I cast multiple spells? Like, let me read mines first, make sure I, I know I'm secluded. <clears throat> Consulting the constellations above, you bind the spell, pulling the cloth skullcap on as you do so. From somewhere close by, you hear you sense evil thoughts. Something is waiting, hoping you will find your way into its trap, but you cannot tell where the evil voice in your mind is coming from. Hmm. Quickly, you cancel the spell. You will learn nothing more, and perhaps you will have some advantage over this enemy if it does not realize your plans. Okay, so I can't cast another spell. Look along the path. You think you see a bridge in the distance. Make a move. <clears throat> hmm. The rope is clearly a death trap. You leave it behind, walking along towards the bridge in the distance. For a moment, you seem <clears throat> to see something moving on the slopes above you. No cast spell? Look up. You look up, but see nothing. A hoofborn, perhaps, watching your progress? Wave? You wave. A few moments later, a rock strikes you on the temple, although you do not see if it was thrown or simply fell. I mean, yeah, hoofborn likes their own rocks, right? That's what hoofborn do. It's like a, it's a friendly, long-distance greeting. <clears throat> it's to show each other where they're at without yelling. And revealing their position, you know? Throw, throw rocks at each other's head. Look at the bridge ahead. The bridge ahead seems strong and secure. It spans the path on the far side. This must be a way, though, it must be the way that travelers to Mampang took in times to the past. You seem no, see no reason to wait here. You <clears throat> you head along the path until you reach the foot of the sturdy-looking bridge that spans the chasm here. The sun lowers into the horizon. Soon it will be dark once more. Look at the bridge. The bridge is made of plain wood and looks sturdy enough. Here in the dry mountain air, it has not even begun to rot. Test it. You take a probing step, but as your foot hits the plank, you hear a strange, quiet sound. It stops when you remove your foot. But then... Uh, but when you put your... Uh, when you... Step back onto the bridge. The murmur begins again. It is though the bridge was whispering. Time to move on. But will you risk the bridge? Well, I have magic protection spells. But I'm kind of interested in what this thing is over here. That little pile of rubble. I mean, <clears throat> I'll see what happens here. As you stride onto the bridge, the whispering grows louder. You begin to make out phrases in the words. The whispers are all quite audible. You will never see the crowd. They say, your journey is pointless. You're wasting your time. Call out a name. Hello? Visible ass- Ooh. Ooh. Actually, no. Uh, I, I do have some hints, right? Clues. Archmage may be dead. Minimites protect magic. Use of silver weapons. The sleepless ram. Nagamante? The- Torture Master. Uh, pay respect to Nagamante, the Torture Master. Okay, get, man, get out of there. There we go. 
The Whispering Bridge, uh, you were told the path to Manpang lies across the Whispering Bridge guarded by the Hermit Colitus. Wrong bridge. Wait. Hang on. Hang on. Is that Colitus? I don't see the other names. Colitus! The echo bounces off the peaks, but that is all. Wait. You wait. Then the bridge shudders, swaying and creaking. The whispering becomes an irritated groan as a ghost steps sideways out of the wood. Well, I'm here! <laughs> the ghost says, what do you want from me? Why is the bridge so miserable? This whole land is miserable, the ghost replies. The whole land. The bridge just tells the truth. Even as a, go even as a ghost, he looks ancient. He feels... This, he feels his way towards as stumbling over my words means it's coffee time. Yeah, I definitely need more coffee. Yeah, I absolutely need more coffee. Sure, we're gonna go with coffee. Ah, there we go. That's more like it. <clears throat> Even as a ghost, he looks miserable. No, ancient. Whole bridge is miserable. There we go. I mixed up the words since they were one line apart. He feels his way towards you as he walks. A blind ghost! His eyes have become painted black in the Christitanti... His eyes have been painted black in the Christitanti tradition where priests and shamans blinded themselves to better see into the realms of the gods. I don't know, I'm, I'm unsure what I want to say. Oh, who were you in life, spirit? I, I understand vaguely. I have read your message. Can you help me cross this bridge? I read your message. Oh, did you? Well, you clearly didn't heed it, did you? I warned travelers to turn back. But I am not a traveler. You insist. I am questing for the crown of kings. His eyes widen in surprise. Then he hangs his head in sadness. A fool's errand. I should have been reading it in a in, in silly old man voice the whole time. Why is this bridge so miserable? The whole land is miserable. <laughs> the whole land. You're wrong. I will succeed. Glad to know the youth are still brainless. Though I was already an old man when I traveled here, so I have no excuse. What can you tell me of Mampang? <clears throat> you ask the sad ghost. He seems to shrug. I never touched it. That's normal now. No one enters and no one leaves. Even the guards in the outer lard yards are trapped there forever. And where is the Archmage? Then the Citadel must be ripe for rebellion. But the ghost only shakes his head. Every soul within the Citadel is controlled, part of the Archmage's great clockwork. If you enter, you will be owned as well. I'll ask some more questions. Who were you in life, spirit? Trying to muster some sympathy from this creature. I was a holy man. I was on a quest, much like yours, but I failed. Just as everyone else will. A holy man and a healer. A holy man and a healer. Where's that coming from? What happened? Holy... Hmm. I was, or perhaps still am. What's the point, though? I can only stave off sickness, but now the Archmage has the crown. Now... I can only stave off sickness, but now the Archmage has the crown. All will suffer. I feel like there's a missing word there, but I understand. Will you heal me? No, I don't really need healing. Well, actually, I've, I've got, like, I've got a missing pinky. I, I will destroy the Archmage. The hermit shakes his head. I cannot cure you of your complacency, and it is terminal out here. He raises his translucent hands to his face as he mutters, berating himself for his failure to reach Mampang. You hear the bridge's whispering grow louder. Tell me how I can aid you, spirit. There is no helping me. The bridge, the <clears throat> colitus groans and the bridge all but chuckles with the wind. I am quite dead. Be calm. 
What do you know of my plight, of this cursed land? He whirls away from you, disappearing into the bridge and coming out of it again. I will heal this land, you tell him. Colitus moves some way towards the ground. The specter is interested. Ow! Oh, with my sword! <laughs> with the crown! He floats near. I can bring peace to the whole ancient world. He floats near you, his ghostly nose nearly trusting yours. How will you find... How do you find yourself so confident? What do you have faith in? My quest, myself, my spirit... Myself. I need nothing more than what I have. Colitus grows quiet. Perhaps, he says, the time of gods is over. Perhaps magic and will can find a way. Yes, I am a magician. I've been practicing my whole quest to approach the archmage as an equal. The whispers recede, replaced by a quiet hum. It dips and raises with Colitus's strengthening voice. Very well, sorcerer, I will help you. With my focus, you may cross the bridge, but I also have something to aid you. A blimberry potion appears in your hand. Thank you. And Colitus raises a stern finger. And remember, when your quest is done and your power is great, you must cleanse this land of evil. Thank you. Thank you, Colitus. You have emboldened me. Nodding to Colitus, you stride across the bridge to be met by a chorus of soft humming. It bolsters your confidence. What did I just say? And you can hear the Colitus's encouragement whispering in your ears. I have reversed the bridge curse. Nice. You step with some satisfaction across the old bridge and... Onto a path on the far side of the chasm. This must be the same mountain road as before. But now the other side of the chasm. Yeah. Wh that goes without saying, dude. Yeah. Hmm. I think by crossing that bridge, I might have found my way to the other side of the gap. Remarkable. Clouds rumble as they roll across the dimming sky. Look ahead. <clears throat> Looking ahead, you can no longer see Mampang behind the mountains. You will have to curve around them to make your way to it. There is no time to waste. I'm absolutely going to stir up a rebellion now that I have that idea in my head. Now that I know the plight of the goat people, surely other people are, are in such similar states. The narrow ledge breaks a little here. Stones settling in the valley below. Look down? Sure. Look over the edge. The trop is dizzying. I'm going to go ahead and try to march through the night, I think. The path begins to climb a little as it turns around the northern mountain. The sun has almost set and the, the sky is a deep pink. It will be night soon. You stand on a narrow pass. To, ma, per, narrow pass, Jesus. Mountain blocking your view northward into Mampang. Look down into the ravine again. Yeah, just taking in the sights. Peer over the edge of the cliff, cliff wall into the ravine. It seems an impossibly long way down. You walk with a spring, invigorated by your journey through the mountains. I, my morale is high. I got plenty of food. Wish I had more gold. Uh, I'm sure Mampang has some rad things to buy. You make your way along the narrow path. For a moment, everything is quiet and peaceful. This could be nothing more than a pleasant stroll through the quiet hills. Westward. <clears throat> I wonder if I can climb down to that tower and take a nap there. You follow the narrow path. Darkness closes in. You need to rest. Suddenly, there is a scuttling sound from nearby. Turn around. Who is it? What is that thing? You whip around to see a pair of long pincers appearing from behind a, a stone. A lynch bug. What's a lynch bug? I don't, I don't know. What's a lynch bug, though? I've never seen such a thing. Uh, fall... F fix. Yeah, I'd take my glue N nap. I could put it to sleep. Tell. Mm, no yap, though. <clears throat> I'm going to try a couple options, you know. I'm curious about what a lynch bug is, since apparently my character knows. Drawing the skullcap from your cap pack, you cast the spell. Then you listen for the lynch bug's thoughts, but it appears to be mostly wondering what the inside of your skin would taste like. It rubs together its antenna. To get, it rubs its antenna together in anticipation, like a chef sharpening a knife. 
its antennas? All right, I'm going to retry that interaction, cast a different spell, even though I can cast another spell. Cast a spell. Let's see what else I can do, since uh, Tell didn't lend anything interesting. Hot. Could fireball it. I mean, I am about to sleep, right? <clears throat> Gum, of course. Hot. Nap. Yeah, go ahead and nap. Nap it, you know? Carefully lift the brass pendulum from your backpack and swing and set it swinging as you cast the spell. The effect is almost immediate, and the lynch bug curls up around itself, antenna twitching gently in rhythm. It has fallen asleep. Uh, bugs don't sleep. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they just go into dormant states, which isn't the same as sleeping. They <clears throat> push it off the path. Eh, no reason to kill it. Just slip on by. Take advantage of the creature's slumber and try to slip past. Then suddenly you feel a wave of nausea. The ground beneath you shifts. The stars whirl. Cast a spell. You open your arms to cast a spell when you fall. You open your arms to cast a spell when you fall. The world rushes past you. Further than it should, you hear a woman's voice singing gently above the sound of lapping waves. What magic is this? Hello? Oh, I've been here before, but I can't remember if I've been here during this playthrough. Waves lull and wash up towards the shore. You lie on a bed of stones, looking up at the stars. Maybe I should push... Maybe I should push the guy off. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see if it even makes a difference. If, if I, like, wake up, my skin has been crawled into by a disgusting bug. <clears throat> you lie on a bed of stones, looking up the stars. I've examined these caves before, but again, I can't remember if it was during this playthrough, because I think you can't actually find your way up to the village, uh, Cantopani, from these caves. You, like, have to go by them and thus miss the merchants. I've always wondered what the mystery of these caves is. This is not High Zaman. A feeling of dread creeps over you. What kind of trap is this? How far have you traveled? Cast a spell. You open your hand, your arms to gather the stars for you. Stay your hands. No, sorry. Stay your hands. A murmur a murmurs a voice, gentle and kind. You will need no protection here. Look for the speaker. You turn this way and that, looking for the speaker, but see nothing but the washing water and spray. Excuse me. I should have paused it when I made that noise. Who are you? You call. <clears throat> I have many names, she replies, but none truly describe who I am. The sea washes at your boots, as though inviting you to step forwards. Yeah, sure, step forward. Gentle wind tugs at your coat, and as you follow it, you realize where you are. You are standing on the soar shore of the Kakabad Sea, barely a half-day's walk from Analand. R really Can I keep talking to her? Or, or did I miss my chance to say, I must go back? <clears throat> you crunch towards the shore. The glinting water of boat slowly rocks to and fro. In the boat sits a woman with a loom. Why did you bring me here? We have, <clears throat> we have walked a long road together, she replies. Perhaps you did not know it, but that road is almost at its end. I bring you here to deliver a warning. I am Libra, goddess of justice, and our long road together has almost reached its end. You already said, <clears throat> repeating yourself. Her voice is filled with sadness. I have kept you safe many times, saved you, but I can do no more. I know you do not understand, but you will soon enough. When you enter Mampang, you will understand. The walls around that citadel are more than those of physical stone. It is a cursed place, guarded by sigils and long knives. You mean you cannot enter? You are right, but perhaps you do not understand the cost 
Anilander, for as long as you have walked, I have walked beside you. I have granted you waking dreams, dreams of your future, dreams from which you wake to walk a different way. Oh, I'm not going to be able to rewind, am I, once I get in there? Yeah, I understand what she means. You listened intently, puzzled. <clears throat> Waking dreams, the goddess continues, the kind that seem real until they disappear as though they had never been. She shoots the shuttle she shoots the shuttle across her loom once more, but no more. Once inside the walls of Mampang, your future will become precious once again. The word strikes a knell of fear in your heart. I understand what you mean. My future is my own. Yes. The woman replies. A large wave strikes the shore, and as it drains, the boat tilts to drift away. The woman makes no move to stop it, merely continuing to weave. Let her go. You steady yourself and watch as she drifts away. The thought of the journey back to Mampang begins to sink into your mind. Yes, see what's in the cave. You step away from the water towards the mouth of the Din Cave. Inside... The stone drips salty tears. The tunnels must be flooded at high tide. Neat. Look around the cave. The cave walls are jagged and irregular, formed by lashing waves and the shuffling of rocks over a thousand years. Here and there, crystal seams wink from beneath the frozen fold. Go deeper. I think there's something in here. I wonder if I can discover it um, without <clears throat> having to take that detour I mentioned. You push deeper into the cave, climbing over the fallen stones, following the line of the deepest darkness up into the towering cliffside. Somewhere overhead are the low hills around Cantapani, and a short distance from there is your home. You climb higher still, upwards, into the rock, when something in the distance begins to roar and moan. You are not alone in the darkness. You open your arms to cast a spell— as a great wind begins to push through the tunnel, gathering its strength and force as it tries to push you back. Your arms are pushed apart and their power unbinds before it can form, falling back into the world, right? As you begin to fall, the stars reach out to catch you. And we're back in Haizaman. Um, okay. I thought it was going to put me in Mampang. Was that real? The taste in my mouth. There is still a taste of salt in your mouth but nothing more. You shake a vision, the vision away and look around yourself once more. They're going to take my rewind powers away as soon as I reach in there. So I better spend my sweet-ass time out here. I'm hoping I can start a rebellion. That'd be badass. Is that where the birdman nests are? Cool model. That's going to be so fun to climb. I bet it's got, like... Maps for every floor. Okay. So what I'm getting from that is that once I'm in Mampang, I won't be able to rewind. So I got to be really careful and really sure that I'm ready. <clears throat> But I'm wondering if I can get anything else from her there. Hang on. Can I, like, uh... Hang on. Along the path... The shore? Yeah, let's go back to the shore real quick. <clears throat> I'm gonna see... If I go into the cave first, can I, can I get a little more? Where am I? Sand. Greetings. We have traveled a long way together. Who are you? I have many names. Step forward, talk to her, go in the cave first, and see what happens. The voice from the shoreline resumes its singing, content to wait for you to return. Oh, good, good. All right. <clears throat> I want to see, like, uh, if I go deeper now. You are not alone in the darkness. Keep climbing. Falling, and then that just takes you back immediately? Or, shucks. I could just ignore her. <laughs> nope, bye. This is my dream. Was that real? No, okay. I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and replay it the way I had it before.
Okay, so this time I decided to walk into the water. Um, you walk into the shallows. Perhaps there's a way to walk around the coast, but it seems hopeless. The sea stretches away southwards, endless. Call out to the boat. In the far distance, you can make out the boat of the goddess moving out on the waves, but calling does no good. Your voice is whipped away by the gathering wind. Now I'm going to go further into the ocean. Drawn by some unknown voice, you step further in... Step further and further out. The wind is picking up. The waves are growing. Water laps around your waist. As the water closes over your head, the stars reach down to catch you. All right, that sounds like a more fun way to exit the scene. Okay, now continuing on the adventure. <clears throat> Taste of salt in my mouth. I awaken from my dream. And nope, never mind. It's still nighttime. I was hoping I got a nice night's re rest, you know? You are climbing up the edge of a deep crater that cuts into a bowl into the lands that cuts a bowl into the landscape. Shaking the dust from your tunic, you make your way to the crater. Mampang envelops the horizon as you draw near. Spear-like spires strike upwards as if shooting towards the heavens. Ah, uh, look into the crater. It's not focused on the city or on the uh, citadel for now. It is the size of a small city. Oh, that must have been why I said city. And you can barely see the opposite edge. Mempang sits beyond it, and it is too wide to walk around. <clears throat> oh, just keep going. Don't look at the citadel. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, confront that when I come to it. Too wide to walk around, eh? Not this road here? That goes all the way around the crater? You better believe I'm, I'm going to go to this building down here. Yeah, that building. Uh, this building over here. Uh, th that building right there? I wonder if I can use my god spell in there to start a rebellion. I have to keep it under th un under wraps, though, right? Because the archmage should not be aware of me. Moon sets. More stars appear. You scramble down towards the crater's edge. It feels odd to be going down after all this time in the mountains. You might be able to shelter in the bushes. Nah. No thanks. Look around. Thick shrubs and low, twisted trees fill this space. You cannot see what lies ahead between the gnarled branches. Anything might be waiting for you. No, don't sleep. <clears throat> We're just con going to continue. I'm noticing Flanker hasn't come to visit yet. Around the rim. I'm noticing what I think might be a nest over there. wonder if I can ambush some birdmen, you know? Because, I mean, that's the way I want to go anyway. And there's that building there, and this building there, and, and that building there. I want to go over here. Yeah. <clears throat> you follow along the path around the rim of the crater. Than the path is thin and precarious. Stones rattle away on either side. The stars turn in the skies overhead. The night air is cold. You take the path around the curved edge of the crater. Hot winds blow down, <clears throat> blow down the bare rock, and you taste ash in your mouth. A path leads down into the crater here. Another path leads north to south along the rim. Look at the path into the crater. Night air is cool and good for walking. Oh, I can't go down to there? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I might have missed something. Oh, I'm, I'm getting tempted to go all the way fucking back, dude. All the way back so that I can cross the bridge again, then go there, then go over there, then climb up. Maybe I put the ladder here, then... Uh, Go over there, then down through there, then climb up, and then visit the goatmen, and then go across the bridge, and then come back. Oof. <laughs> Man. Didn't offer me a way back over there. Shucks. I'm going to go to the northern path, see about that house along the edge. <clears throat> the edge of the crater bowl, rather than going down into it. Uh, looking along the path, it continues to curve. I don't know, actually. Maybe I do go to that building. Which way do I want to go first? Because, like, eh, either way would be doubling back. Maybe, it, maybe I'll be able to get to something without being seen if I go around the edge under the cover of darkness. Anyway... Looking ahead, the path continues to curve. There is some kind of hazy shape 
up ahead, barely visible through the thin smoke that hangs around the edge of the crater. Look at the shape. You peer into the middle distance and make out a hut. It's no kind of shelter and seems to be open to the elements. A thin bell tower rises from its roof, bronze bell tilting a little in the wind. You must keep moving. You are too exposed up here. No, I'm fine. Let me go examine the hut. It's night time. <clears throat> they're, they're eagle men, not owl men, okay? You approach the hut, squinting against the dust in hope of spotting any danger. It's wide windows and empty doorways. It has wide windows and empty doorways, allowing the wind to whip right through it. The wind gently swings the bell on the roof. Cast a spell. I always like when the game, like, I go to cast a spell and the game says, uh-uh. Yep. Yep, yep, right there. Fall. Mm. Sa sus. Mm. Sap. Nope. I was hoping for, like, tell or something. I wonder if I can, like, get rid of the bell and, and like, uh... <clears throat> you know, then I'm safe from alarm. Alarms? Alarm! I can't remember. Is it gothic where some of the NPCs yell, ALARM! Like they were meant to go, oh! But they just read out the line. I'll go ahead and sense danger at least. <clears throat> the hut is guarded. Ah, I see. The hut is guarded, the voice remarks, and the bell ring the bell's ring echoes across the crater. It can be heard from the citadel, tread softly. Okay. Go ahead and cast the spell. Um I think I'm gonna go ahead and just dop the bell off, you know? Just drop the bell on whatever's inside. You craft the spell and the door to the hut flies open, banging against the frame. That's not what I meant at all. That's not what I meant at all. Fucking idiot. Okay, uh, let's try that again. First of all, I am running with the sus. Um, you know, I'm not a metagamer. Now, what's a different spell I could guess? So, sus tells me there is somebody guarding it. Doze. Mm, I wouldn't have anyone to cast it on. Fall. Float. Dop, doze, sap, sus. I'm gonna see if I can float up to the bell and untie it. <clears throat> Never mind. Nope, can't. Okay. Look at the window. Might be a hunched figure of a person inside. Watch. You wait, hand resting on the hilt of your legendary sword. Nothing moves within the hut. You begin to shiver in the cold. Sus. Okay. How about, um... So now I have visual on the person. Probably don't need yap, right? Fall didn't do nothing. Slowness, nah. I think I'm gonna depress it. Sap. Sap. Immediately feel yourself yourself. With no other creatures nearby. Suddenly the crater seems like a much nicer place. Quiet. Desolate. Dead. <clears throat> Fantastic. Okay. Just sussing it out, you know? Sus. Right? Gotta get that out of the way so I'm not a cheater. Now, how am I gonna get in there without alerting the guard? Enter the hut. 
I'm gonna see if I can charm the, the g <clears throat> inside the hut. You gained three provisions, lost considerable gold, ascended into the peaks of Zanz the Zanzunus, descended into the Ang Argbad crater, and crossed the Whispering Bridge. You stepped through the narrow doorway. The hut is sparsely furnished with a large rope hanging from the ceiling. Probably for the bell. Two guards lie dead. I lie on the floor. Dead? I mean, that would explain why I couldn't find any other creatures to use my magic on. Wait and watch. You hang back and wait. The two guards appear slumped side by side against the bench near the door. A few empty wineskins litter the ground. They're drunk! Look over the guards. They both stink of wine and filth, and washing must not be a priority. Clad in male shirts, which look a little worse for wear. Search the room. The poke quietly about the room, cautious not to disturb the sleepers, but you find nothing. Then you notice one of the guards is clutching a cloth bundle as she sleeps. Swap it for a rock? Sure. Sure, try your best. Taking a large, ro Taking a large rock, you ease the bundle from her arms and replace it. She doesn't stir. Unwrap the bundle? You unwrap it, discovering nothing more than another wineskin. Yeah, I'll keep that. Provisions, you know, stealing their wine. You turn to see the other guard blearily awake and uh, blearily awake and staring at you. Go back to sleep. Stab the guard. I'm a traveler. I'm a traveler. I mean you no harm. The sozzled guard's head nods twice, but the second guard stands with some difficulty. Doesn't matter. Trespassing's punishable by death. It's easy to remember. While the two guards are unsteady from the drink, they look determined. One draws his sword, and the other goes for the large rope. She must be trying to alert the others with the bell. Hmm. I want to see if I can choose a different option. One draws his sword, the other goes for the large rope. First and second, whatever. Attack the second. You lunge at the guard holding the rope, but the first cuts you off with a, with a thrust to the side. You'll have to fight him off. Looks like the best you can do is probably six point something. Get him! My legendary sword! The drunken guard responds with a tough blow, balancing the strength and balancing strength and impact. I wonder if I can take his clothes. But he misjudged your strength and you knock him back. Alright? So we probably can't get very high, right? Oh, fuck. He got barely higher than I did. I want to see if I can... Uh, you know, I will try that if I can't figure out any way to charm them into it, right? I do want to steal the drink, though. Over the guards. There's the room. Steal the wine. Yoink! Thank you. Go back to sleep. Stab the guard. I'm a traveler. Go back to sleep. Sozzled guard. Ah, who are you? Trespassing is punishable by death. Seems like uh, the only possible thing to do is to, like, instantly attack. Well, that doesn't seem very gorilla-like of me. <clears throat> Wait and watch. They're drunk. Why can't why can't I cast a spell on them? Like I was I was outside, I could see them inside. There's no windows, right? So there's a room. Swap it for a rock. Wrap the bundle. What are you doing? Stab. Stab the guard. Lunge at the guard with your blade, but it glances off its armor. Legendary sword, by the way. Beaten up armor. She lashes out with her fist and stumbles sideways. Her drunken punch surprised you, but it didn't have much force. The commotion wakes the, uh, her other companion. They both blearily stand. They look determined. Okay. Cool. So, uh, pointless. Pointless. I'm gonna give it one more shot, see. Is there any other way? Right? Check the nearest. They're drunk. Look over the guards. Clad in mail. I do want to steal the wine. Take it gently. What happens? <clears throat> you slowly remove the cloth. It is mine, she mumbles, asleep. 
unbundle it. Maybe the secret is to get away with the bundle, but then again, you know, if I kill them, then then the Archmage is going to be alerted of me. So I think I'm going to quietly steal the wine, right? It's it's the wine heist, okay? I gotta ponder away the optimal route to steal the wine. Search the room. Gently take the wine. It's mine. And, and oh, you release the bundle and she snuggles it into her. Wait, what what about uh, swapping it with a rock? Was there any other option or like? Because I remember there was one to um. To open it, right? So there's got to be a, an alternate option. Place it. She doesn't stir. Oh, the only option is to unwrap it. Okay. I mean, it's been a neat exploration here, but I can't see any way I can get through this uh, while stealing the wine. I, I want to steal the wine, dude. I want to steal the wine. Unwrap the bundle, and then I imagine if I run, I immediately cause the uh, alarm bell to ring, right? I'm a traveler. Attack the first guard. I'll, I'll try to fight at least. Go for seven again. Se se seven again. <clears throat> Not the best opening. I, I could be a little more precise, but... I think I can just overpower this guy, probably. Let's go for another seven. Nice. Dead in two blows? Relentlessly, you cut and thrust, keeping the guard pinned. You rush forward with a deep slash. It's enough to finish him. I should have been actually reading, but, like, I've got the legendary sword, so I was lazy. You whirl around to see the other guard is already across the room. She's nearing the rope. Throw the chakram. Throw the chakram. You spin the chakram and it slices into the back of the guard's neck with cruel accuracy. Take the chakram. Search the body. You pat down the bodies of the two guards, finding a small handful of gold pieces. With both guards lying dead, your presence here is still a secret, but reinforcements will no doubt arrive eventually. Sleep here? <laughs> uh, Blimberry, too. Two vials of Blimberry potions. I don't know if that's even worth it. Like, I've proven I, I can... I can do it, right? I think I might just go past them, you know? I might just sneak past. Yeah. I'm gonna at least uh, cast my sus spell. Suss it out. Hmm. It's protected. <clears throat> I wonder if I can tempt them out. Nah. Nah, let's just leave him alone. It's an alarm place. It's too high risk. I enjoyed exploring, though. Sneak on by. It's dark still, and now it's morning. In some provisions. Yep. Beyond the hut. The Archmage remains unaware of me. Break into a run, intending to pass by the hut as fast as possible from around the corner of your eyes. Have they spotted you? Nope. I don't think so. Charge inside? Nah, keep running. Set a moment later. Oh, come on, come on, man. I've seen they're drunk. I... So is the only way to get past this to kill him? Sus. Is there any way to sneak by? Sneak by, rather. Cast a spell? I don't know. <clears throat> Fall, I don't know. I can't really see anything. Any useful. Got sus. Got yap. Don't know what yap's useful for here, but... <clears throat> Maybe it's just a matter of getting here earlier so that they're still asleep. I 
mean, do I even need to go through here? I could just be exploring for fun right now. Let's try fall. Float on by. Lighting your weight to a mere fraction of normal. Make a move. The trail goes right past the hut in both directions. Float by. S sneak. Creep. Creep through the air. The hut follow... Uh, you have been awake all night. Oh, hello. That did work. I think I think going anti-gravity made it so that my footsteps were light enough. You leave the hut and follow the path in the direction of Mampang. Your weight returns and you gradually settle back down to the ground. It must be morning by now. You've been awake all night and you are weaker for it. Nah, I've pulled tons of all-nighters. Look down into the crater. Smoke rises from a deep fissure in the ground and you see an empty, broken building. Uh, maybe I picked the right option. I'm considering going down there to examine the broken building, at least. <clears throat> you follow the path all the way to, around the crater to the far side. An open pass leads forwards and up. The skyline is suddenly dominated by the looming specter of Mampang. The air moves a little around you, still icy, but fresh. Suddenly, you hear the stomping of boots across gravel. A troop of guards is approaching from the east. Cast the spell, invisibility. Right? Easy. Easy peasy. Ah! I hate the spin. Summon, summon giants. No. Uh, yeet. No. Yes? Actually. Yeah, there we go. Invisibility. Nice. <clears throat> Enchant the ring, gradually a thin glow exudes from the gem and covers you. You are in just in time. The next moment, the troop of guards rounds the corner and marches straight past you and away down their path. You breathe a deep sigh of relief as they disappear out of sight. Yep, don't look at the citadel. We move on. So I want to see what happens down here. Um, I'm curious about this, <clears throat> this building. The dewy light from your ring recedes and disappears. The trail passes a deep crack in the rock, which extends southwards, grown deeper and wider. Smoke issues upward. Look over at the fissure. The fissure is like a deep wound in the earth. <clears throat> a deep wound in the ground of the crater, rather. Through the as though the earth had shrunk and cracked apart. There is no way across the fissure, but a path leads in either direction past it. Now, I'd like to examine the ruined building. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'd go close to the fissure. See what's up. The air begins to get warm. Sweat trickles down your back as you get closer to what appears to be a crack deep in the earth. Approach it. Yeah, toxic smoke? No problem. You make your way carefully to the fissure's edge. It's almost pleasantly warm here, with soft moss underneath your feet. Superheated steam bursts up every few minutes with a hiss. There's something else in the air, too. The sounds of wind. Surely, not voices. Look into the vent. Listen closely. Cast a spell. Invisibility, of course. Oh, gotta be sneaky. I can? Huh? Why can I pick Y if there's nothing to mix it with? Doc. Nap. Res? Resurrect the dead? On what? Straining to listen, you make out the dis uh, distinct voices coming from deep inside the vent. It's like standing on a balcony above a room full of whispering people, all crowding for attention at the edge of your hearing. But how can anyone survive down there? I'm also curious. But like... Sus? Yeah, sure. Sus it out. There's little to fear here, echoes. Nothing more. Okay. It's word spoken. It fades away. Okay. So why can I cast res? If the stars are right, I might as well. Drink the holy water? Pour the water into the vent? I'm gonna cause a fucking volcanic eruption over here. You pour the sparkling holy water into the vent. A moment later, you hear an all-too-human gasp of surprise from somewhere below. 
A voice begins to call out in curious, uh, curious, babbling tongue. A moment later, there is a scream and a plume of particularly black smoke. There are no creatures near the vent, despite what the warmth that, despite the warmth that provides. I just resurrected somebody to start burning again. I gotta look down there first. Approach the fissure. Look into. Well, let me suss first. I'm not a cheater. There we go. Come on. Suss it. Now look in. There's a jagged crack in the earth. The black stone is deeply cut. Strange shapes flicker within the rising jets of steam, seemingly murmuring. But whatever your spell says, you can definitely hear voices. Where are they coming from? Listen closely. No creatures in the vent. Who's there? Voices become louder in response, crowding over each other. They're speaking in a language you do not recognize. Rap? Can I cast rap? I can. Talk all languages. <clears throat> grabbing the uh, grabbing the wig from your pack, you put it onto your head and... The voices in the crater transform into a cacophony of overlapping curses, wails, and complaints. They're confused, many of them hardly making sense. Speak to them. You greet the voices, and they respond with surprise. Green shadows flicker near the vent. You can hear us, one asks. Can you see us as well? Do we, do we still exist? You are dead. Hmm. You are dead. No! Yeah, you are ghosts. No, wells one. Yes. Another voice says, tinged with madness. We have been dead for so long, we've almost forgotten death. Can I aid you? How can one aid the dead? Put out the fire, one cries. Are you not the Annalander? I cannot help you. I am the Annalander. The Great One! The one who was to come! The voices reply, our savior, our hope. It's too late for you? No, it's no, it's fucking not. What are you talking about here? What are you talking about? It's too late for you. It's too late for you, you tell them. You are dead. Rivers of death run under the citadel beyond. The people there within are trapped and live their lives as grain in the archmages of mill. The voices are all shouting, but the common chorus breaks through. Break the spell! Break him! We will rise! Now, let me examine these a little closer. Let me figure out who they are before I go promising to free them. Approach the fissure. So what if I rap first? Or... Well, let me sauce again. Don't want to cheat. ay ay ay! He scrambled it. So, sense danger. Okay. Now... R-A-P. Talk all languages. Many of them hardly making sense. Listen. They're demanding to know where they are, what year it is. One has lost a donkey. Another complains of a stomachache. They're nothing more. They're nothing more than human, even though they are almost certainly quite dead. Speak to them. You greet the voices, and they respond with surprise. Yes. Uh, do we still exist? You are dead. You are ghosts. We have been dead for so long, we have nearly forgotten death. How did you die? Who are you? How does it feel to die? Who are you? <clears throat> we are the dead of Ogbad. We lived in the village here. It is lost. A village here? The earth was not cracked when the village was built. How did you die? The earth opened. Every house was lost into the fire. This vent is all that is left, and we are trapped. The, rocky, the rocks pressing and heat burning. I still feel it on my skin, one cries. Can I aid you? How can you aid the dead? Put out the fire! Are you not the Annalander? I would love to figure out who is the Annalander, the Great One, the One... No, I want to tell them that I am the Annalander. One... Oops. One second. Okay. Back to where we were before. 
I am the Yanolander. The Great One, the one who was to come. Our savior, our hope. It is too late for you. You are dead. Rivers of death run under the citadel. <clears throat> How can I reach him? I will destroy him. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of getting sold on it. He hides in his tower. He hides from us, from the dead, from death. But the tower door has a key. Something rolls up from the vent and rests by your foot. You pick it up, a vial of water that sparkles with the light. Do not drop it. It is blessed by Kaoth himself. <laughs> Get back into the vent. Oh, you lift it up, a vial of holy water. Powerful, certainly, but how will it open the door of the Archmage's tower? Spell begins to fade. Take the wig from your head and the words become meaningless to you once more. I mean, I have multiple vials already, so I don't mind using it here. Um, is there any way for me to fix the fix the the ravine there? I mean, there's an app. I I can't imagine it works on a, on a ravine though. Wrap. Dock. I don't I don't think this counts as a disease. Nap, res, res, wrap. I mean, I can res from inside. Cause sleepiness? Can I, can I put... You settle down to sleep. Cool. Draw my cloak tighter. Always floating just on the edge of meaning. Draw my cloak tight. Then you feel the definite presence of a hand resting upon your back. Lie still. Give them this moment. You lie still, barely breathing. The hand rests in place, icy cold. The murmurs around you increase in volume. Just keep still. So, did they hurt me? <clears throat> You cannot lie st uh, sorry. The icy hand begins to stroke this way and that, and then suddenly it pushes. You feel a brilliant, cold, sharp point entering your back. You cannot lie still any longer. You turn around sharply to find a glowing presence holding a curved dagger that has been stroking up and down your back. It's a death wraith leering at you from under a death mask. In one bony hand it holds something up, something short, white and stubby. I've been looking for you, the death wraith breathes, voice rattling. I've developed a taste for you, you see. It opens its jaw, revealing a terrible black void, and it delicately pops the entire the thing into its mouth. What, the dagger? What was that? You did not recognize it? The death wraith replies, <laughs> figures, fingers. The empty stub on your hand throbs where you lost your finger. Aw, oh, man. Give it back. <laughs> Give me my fingers back. Where'd you get it? Dug it out of the hillside in the dirt, the death wraith answers. I've been following you ever since, my darling. Yes, the spell? I mean, sure. I, I, it's taken some amount of life for us, right? But, um... Gak? Mm. Tell? Mm. Hot? Nah. Wall? Walk? Mm -mm -mm. I mean, I could scare it. I don't know if a death wraith can feel scared, though. No. Tell? Read minds. Drawing the skullcap from your pack, you, uh, you, the thoughts of the creature enter your mind, stony, cold, and cruel. It imagines your bones taken apart one by one, dipped in blood and stroked clean with the flat blade of its knife. You tear the skull cap off before you hear any more. Uh, give it back. Give me my fingers back. Oh no, it's no use to you. Besides, I've come to ask you for another. Have I lost two fingers now? Wield my magic chain. Oh, I forgot. Oh fuck. 
I forgot the chain is is pitiful. I mean, I'm probably gonna go back anyway, but howls in icy rage. As it approaches, knife outstretched, you gather your wits and drop into a defensive crouch. I don't know, you think it's gonna go in? Let me, let me risk a point. Okay. It still has more strength than I can even muster. I will come for your blood. I will suck you dry. Spooky. Lunge. Nice. Actually got it. Death rate does not bleed, but it seems to flicker. Leans forward with its crooked hands. Your heart will be mine. It will stop. Boundaries, buddy. You turn for most of the blow, then adjust your grip and settle your nerves. Yeah, ain't no way I'm fighting this guy. Uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, resume back where I was talking at the ghosts uh, next time. I'll catch you then. Bye-bye.